Welcome back. So we're just wrapping up the install of our uh, field coilovers on our 335A project car here. And uh, we had kind of an aha moment about you know corner balancing and ride height and, and how the two are related. And so we realized we, it would be a good opportunity to just kind of give an overview of, of what cor corner balancing is, um, how corner balance and ride height are related, and uh, you know, maybe kind of give you a, a, an overview, rough overview of where it makes sense to corner balance a car and where it might not make sense to corner balance a car. Um, before we dive into that, I did just want to say if you like this channel, if you like the content that we put out, please drop a like and subscribe. That really goes a long way to helping us. And the absolute best way to support this channel to make sure we can keep coming back and making content for you is head over to our website, which is flatironstuning.com. If we've got anything at all that you might need over there, um, your business goes a long way to giving us the ability to come back and make more content for you. So please like and subscribe to the channel and check out flatironstuning.com. So, so basically what happened with this car was, um, we, you know, before we bolted the struts on, we kind of gave it an eyeball approximation, bolted everything on the car, put it down on the ground for the first time, and saw that the front suspension was about an inch and a half too high, and the rear suspension was about a half an inch too low. So as we brought the car up and we're correcting the front, you know, we took our measurements, we're, we're pulling, pulling the front struts down. Uh, we were about to jump on the rears and change the right height there, and we realized, you know, let's let's put the car back on the ground. Let's make sure that our rear measurements are correct before we before we go on and, and tinker there. And what we saw was, sure enough, the front had come down an inch and a half. That was right, but in dropping the front an inch and a half, it had actually brought up the rear about that half an inch that we were low. So it ended up that just changing the front right height actually corrected the rear as well. And the reason for that is because as we had dropped the, the front of the car, more of the weight had moved to the front axle, and in doing so, the, the rear uh, had actually come up to where we wanted it to be. And so that's a really good visual of, uh, or it was a really good example of how ride height affects the, the weight distribution of the car. Uh, and in fact, that's why I've got this pan here in front of me. So we'll, we'll kind of one of our aha moments is we realize that as you're setting ride height, and especially as you're corner balancing the car, a good visual to keep in mind is a pan with just a little bit of water in it. Because if you pull up one end, the, you know, the water will slide to the front. If you, pull, you know, if you drop one corner, all the water goes to that corner. And that's how you know, changing the ride height of the car affects the weight distribution of the car. So, so what we did, you know, to, you know, once we saw that, just to kind of see what was going on, is we brought out the corner balancing scales. So that's a scale that goes underneath each tire. And you know, then you put the car down on the scales and you can see what the weight is on each, on each wheel. So you know, the sum of it, of course, is how much the car weighs, but you can see how the weight is distributed. Um, just as a footnote, we were surprised the car actually ended up weighing a lot less than we expected. We were guessing it was going to be like 36, 3,700 pounds. Um, but probably because this is the rear wheel drive and manual transmission version of the 335, it only weighs about 3,400 pounds. So that was definitely a welcome surprise. Um, but so here, what, what you can see is this is the weight of the car just basically at the right height that we set. And you can see how it's, it's actually reasonably close to you know, a 50-50 weight distribution on the cross weights. Um, and so then I hopped in the car. So you can then see how with my weight on the driver's seat, um, how that weight is distributed through the four, four tires on the car. So then to kind of get another visual of what happens as you change ride height, we took the right front and we raised it a quarter of an inch, just one quarter of an inch on that one corner, and then put it back down on the scales. And you can see even that small change did make a bit of a change to, to the weight distribution in the car. And then I hopped back in the driver's seat. And, and again, you can see that, that that small change up front made a change with how that, the driver's weight is then distributed to the car. So that's, that's what's going on with, with the right height and the weight distribution, and that's where corner balancing comes in. You know, the reason you would corner balance a car is to make sure that you've got the same weight, weight distribution on each diagonal, so that as you're going through you know, a left corner and a right corner, you're gonna get as close to the same behavior, as close to the same weight transfer as possible. That's what gives you the most predictable handling in, in the vehicle. Um, so where does that make sense and where might it not make sense? So, for instance, we're not going to fully corner balance the BMW here. And the reason is, for one, it just doesn't see really any track time, much of any track time at this point. And if I were to go to the track, I don't really have a consistent configuration that I know that the car is going to go out at. Um, you know, if there's, if there's any weight variables at all, you know, even something as simple as fuel load, uh, fuel load, passengers, interior trim, that sort of thing, it doesn't really make sense to, to spend all of the time to fully corner balance a car 
because any change in those variables and then that, that corner balancing just isn't going to be as, as effective as, as it could be. Um, you know, for instance, Scotty's race car, we're going to be bringing it in here in the next few weeks to, to do a full corner balance on it. And that car, you know, because we know that every time it's going out, he's going to be the driver. Uh, the interior is basically never going to change and, you know, can consistently know what fuel load we're going out with. That's where the corner balancing makes sense. You know, because it's going to be a repeatable weight setup, that's where spending the time to optimize that, that setup of the car, that's where it can, it can have an improvement in handling. So, um, you know, that's where, that's where some corner balancing might make sense and might not make sense for you. But it definitely, you know, as you're setting the right height, it's something to keep in mind. And that's, you know, kind of one of the places where making sure you've got an even right height, at least per axle, is definitely valuable. So. Hopefully, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please do drop a like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And as always, uh, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning.